Hello, everybody. Um, it's been a long day, I know. But um, I'm going to talk something uh, about something that's very dear to me. The concept of personal space and personal connection has consumed me for quite some time now. And it was something that especially hit home when I had moved back to Pakistan in 2008 after an eight-year hiatus from being abroad. When I moved back, I remember as the months went by, I remember the seriously debilitating feeling that had been building up inside of me, both mentally and physically. And it kind of culminated in a nervous breakdown of sorts. In the aftermath and scrutiny of what might have happened, I began to realize that it was actually the physicality of the city of Karachi that was affecting me so terribly. And this might be an obvious thing to state, but sometimes for a girl, life in Pakistan is terribly confining. I was always inside. I was either in the house, or I was in the car, or I was in the office, or I was at a friend's house, or a relative's house. I was always inside, rinse and repeat. And to further exacerbate this claustrophobic feeling, there was always a male chaperone somewhere on the horizon. There was either a guard at the gate of wherever I was, or there was a driver in the car, or there was uh, my father, or a brother, or a male uh, friend who was escorting me home, maybe at night. Uh, and this was, mind you, before Uber and Kareem existed in Pakistan. So this feeling of confinement and being held constantly hostage by way of chaperone is interestingly both contrasted and also enabled by something that I've been trying to rack my brain around for a very long time. Because of the severe lack of public spaces in Pakistan, I feel that we as a people do not share our personal space with each other, especially outside of our cliques. And I get the feeling that this might be the reason for the disintegration of our social fabric. And I remember back then that there was this distinct feeling of deprivation, and I didn't know how to put my finger on it. That was until I visited New York City in 2012 for the premiere of my first feature film, Seedlings. I remember at the time I spent about 50% of my time in New York subways, and to my director and my team's great amusement, I even got to my film's premiere and the award ceremony and my ball gown and everything by the trusty C train on the blue line on the subway. And if anyone's been to New York and been on the subway, they know that there is nothing like the New York subway to seamlessly segue you into somebody else's life. Here at 6.30 in the morning, you will find the elementary school teacher, you'll find the investment banker, you'll find the janitor, you'll find the housewife, you'll find the student, and me. And we're all sharing the same personal space. We're all sitting together. And I get to sit over there and just be with them and get a glimpse of what makes them real. Not through YouTube or TV or the media in some glorified or defamatory lens, but, but through the course of their real lives, through the course of their real, tired or happy, unassuming lives. And no doubt, our whole life is an exercise in gaining perspective. But the question is, how do we in Pakistan, or for me in Karachi, in a country and a city that is so severely lacking in public spaces, that makes it difficult to interact with people outside of our cliques, how do we go about gaining that crucial perspective to make us a more tolerant society? <clears throat> when I went to New York again, and this time on my Fulbright program, I got to live there for two years, I kept mulling over that question. What makes New York, New York? What is it about the city that has this ability to inspire and humble and make you feel humble and, and empowered all at the same time? It can make you feel invincible and free. And I realized that there's a lot of people who come to New York City to be free. And so by default, it has a very high concentration of people who have purposefully left their prejudices behind. And that type of environment necessitates an attitude of non-judgment, which in turn is all the more freeing. As I was to learn, this is because New York is physically as well as ideologically extremely accessible. I remember this incident, uh, I was at this falafel shop, and the, the guy who ran this falafel shop, he was a, a Yemeni's Orthodox Jewish rabbi. And he had just witnessed me having this really harrowing incident, and I was sitting there really distressed. And he comes over from the counter, and he sits down next to me, and he gave me this session of tough love. 
and he asked me, have you ever wondered why New York City has so many bridges? Big, beautiful, strong bridges. And I was like, what? I, I don't understand. And he said, it's because New York City is a city of solutions. He said, everywhere you go, there are problems. The world is full of problems. But the trick is to look for the solution, not the problem. And that's what makes New York City so great, because she finds a solution and makes a bridge for everything. So how do we in Pakistan find a solution to our problems? And make no mistake about it, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. How can we go about breaking social barriers and sharing personal spaces? How can we come up with the solutions when we have so many daunting challenges, like infrastructural challenges and cult cultural challenges that are going to take years to grapple with? Who knows? But I remember, on one of my magical subway episodes, there were these four black men with big, beautiful voices, and they broke into song. And please excuse me, because I'm not a singer, but I remember that song left like a really big impression on me. And it went something like this. <clears throat> I don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about the French I took. Don't know much about the science book. But I do know that I love you. And I know that if you love me too, what a wonderful world this would be. <laughs> Thank you. So after having the privilege today of hearing all of these wonderful people who I get to call that they're, I'm, I'm part of this fraternity, after hearing all of these wonderful people speak about their work, about their ideas, and share their stories, I'm excited to say with some conviction that yes, what a wonderful country Pakistan can and will be. And so if I ask of you to take away something from what I've said, it's that seek out people and listen to other people's stories so that you can connect the dots to the bigger picture. And be aware that you are also a part of many other people's stories and their perceptions and their perspectives. So take every opportunity to show up to nurture those stories also. And finally, be aware that you are responsible for the energy that you bring into a space into any space. And so even if you're sitting over there with somebody and you don't even say a word, you know that there's still a conversation that is going on and that there is always somebody who is listening and that it is your responsibility to listen back. Thank you.